Oh good, do we know where we're going? It's morning time on the vlog. Yeah, we're going straight ahead. Okay, that's good. So it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We've had another kind of lazy morning. We have got some things planned today. Just basically gonna go and do the sites that we haven't done yet. And then meet up with a friend that I've never met. Have you met him? Uh, yeah, I met him in Litchfield, but I don't, I don't know what he looks like now, to be fair. He had long hair and stuff, but I don't think he's like that anymore. He's a professional nurse now, so. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's a local. We're meeting in a cafe later on today. First is breakfast. Then um, we're going to go and do, like I said, some of the sites that we've not done yet. Um, and then hopefully the night is going to end in the cocktail bar like we were supposed to do on the first night. But again, we're gonna we're gonna just see how it goes, and first of all, eat and get coffee because we're hungover and want coffee, don't, aren't we? Yeah. Aren't we? Yes. I'm not that hungover. I've had a paracetamol, but I woke up this morning and I was like, oh god, I got the shakes. <laughs> it's always a good idea to drink the Bex until you get the shakes. Oh, <laughs> anyway, see you at breakfast. I, want, I wanted to try the banana bread as well. So what's this? This is best in the world, which is basically like... Uh, greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. Best in the world. I don't know what I'm doing. You're suffering. Yeah, and then... Um, I guess I can't get it out like that. I was going to try and slide it. Okay. So we get like walnut bread, and then there's pear and some other things. Goat's like cheese as well. Mm. Pears. Mm -hmm. What does it taste like? I can smell the peanut sauce from mine. Now I've opened that bag. Like cheesy, fresh. <laughs> nice. Mm. Oh, let me try some. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice. The bread's almost like rye bread. Oh, oh. That's like... It's basically a peanut butter sandwich. A lot of tofu and vegetables in it. It's giving me some ideas for sandwiches in the future. <laughs> it's like a savoury one. If it had jam in it, if it had like chilli jam in it, it would like just be perfect. But this is gorgeous. The tofu is really firm. Mm. So I'm uh, going to eat this. Leave me alone. Again, we just had to go and stumble past a donut shop and get donuts. So that's the white chocolate and strawberry, and that's a pistachio nougat one. Nougat? How do you yeah. say it? Yeah, nougat. Okay. Nougat. So um, yeah. Oh my God, they're playing Daft Punk. Right. Let's give these a bloody try. We're gonna do donut comparison now. Now these are vegan donuts. All of them are vegan. Yes. Okay. I'm a donut baby. <laughs> They've 
pistachio gives that kind of like a savoury kick mm. in a good way. Sounds good. The dough is just, just as good as yesterday's and the day before's. Uh, we've had donuts every day. Oh dear. Yeah. But we haven't been to Dunkin though. No, we haven't. And this is the white chocolate. I mean, this is, these are 3.30 each, so they're not like a thingy, but they add some other ones that you'll see, but this is the one. They look really soft and easy to bite. I'm not getting much white chocolate off that, I'm not going to lie. I'll have to go for the second bite. <laughs> Back in the same place, feeling a bit more human. Walk into Alexanderplatz uh, U-Bahn yes. station. Yeah. Yeah, we're going on the U-Bahn, not the S-Bahn. Yes. Um, and where's the stop? Magdalenenplatz. Okay, so Magdalenenplatz, and that is the home of the Stasi Museum. So um, Mondays, which is today, a lot of the main museums on the museum island are closed. So we did a little bit of research and we had a look at like basically which ones that are open that we wanted to go to. What's the matter? Oh, fish. He's ruining my vlog. Sorry. Anyway, there's a fishy smell. But you know, you've got to expect that. Anyway, um, we are going to the Stasi Museum now. And then, um, carrying on with the day, what meeting up to, with... Uh, Alex. Yeah, we go to uh, Brandenburg Gate and Checkpoint Charlie. Meeting up with Alex and then probably going to the DDR Museum after. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. So, um, yeah. Breakfast was good. Really good, actually. Sandwich and donut, can't go wrong. Nice little cheeky coffee. Not too big either. I am a fan of small coffees these days. But yeah, we've got to navigate this fucking shit show now. So uh, I will report what happens. much different to Northampton to be fair I think Northampton was also occupied by the Soviets you know that massive uh, flat by the old Greyfriars it's like got green on it yeah. god that's a disgusting piece of architecture okay so right outside the Stasi Museum they've got nice boards of uh, you know little snippets of the history and the timelines which is interesting and I love a good infographic I've got to tell you and I especially love this so for anyone who's watching this that doesn't know that was what happened after the second world war so you've got the Soviet Union and their occupied and allied uh, yeah allied states I guess satellite states there but if we go right in there you can see it so where we are right now is going to be on the east side and that occupied west zone there the white around it, that white border, that's where the Berlin Wall was. Just to reiterate, it was around the west side of Berlin, not the east. But this is interesting. I'm going to have a little read through this and go through the timelines now. But look, it's massive, there's loads. So ideally, you know, you could just come here and read this, get a slice, get a piece. And then you can go home. Oh, God, there's some really cool pictures over there. OK, let's have a read through. In 1946, the Soviet occupying power established the German Administration of Interior. Its area of authority soon included a political police, the secret police. And that's the museum that we're in today with the Stasi Museum. 
Soviet dictator Stalin, on the insistence of the SED leadership, so the Socialist Party that were in power during the East German occupation, uh, authorised the creation of a German secret police in December 1948. It became the Ministry for State Security in 1950. The task for the Ministry of State Security was to protect and stabilise the SED dictatorship, so the Socialist Party's dictatorship over East Germany. For this to work, the SED required loyal and obedient employees. The Ministry took disciplinary measures against anyone who deviated from the rules of conduct and work regulations. In other words, the socialist or communist occupied East Germany used the secret police as a means of social control over its citizens and was created to ensure that there was no collective deviation from their plans to secure a socialist state in East Germany. The Stasi used hundreds of thousands of informers, mostly people between the ages of 20 and 40, and six times more men than women. Some informers acted out of political conviction or financial interest. Others were forced to collaborate by the MFS. There were informers who voluntarily agreed to work with them, but provided very few reports, and others who became passionate about informing. The room that we're looking through right now in this clip is uh, part of the headquarters that still remains virtually intact the way it would have done when the Stasi operated within these walls and these headquarters where now the museum is. So a lot of the architecture, a lot of the interior, everything there remains exactly the same for us to all observe to see what life was like for the people at the top of the Stasi that were looking down and informing and uh, ensuring people were complying. I feel like I'm on a movie set. Look. Don't you feel like it's like a movie set? But this is literally what it was. Oh my god. I actually feel like we've been transported back in time. This is absolutely insane. It's like a movie set. Yeah. I bet they could probably do some filming in here anyway. Back to the beginning, aren't we? That's Mark's there. Referata and Rotwein. Basically, Pete just read that and said that the KGB have been in this room, in this room, just uh, talking business. Glass of red, a couple of bottles of red, probably. They got our man Lennon over there just uh, watching over everything, making sure everything's all kosher. <laughs> My god, this is just mental. Third floor now. So that was the device used to steam open envelopes from letters from like the West, basically. So they could read them. Or the people, what the people were sending to the West or to other people to see if there was one. And then uh, all passing information on. And then this is obviously to pick up any like hidden ink. You know, like when you hit, slide it under a light or whatever and you can see it on the paper. Oh my God. They were so paranoid, weren't they? Yeah. Museum. It was really quiet in there, but what I was going to do is I've written down loads of stuff because I'm going to forget. So I just wanted to go over what the Stasi are, what they were rather, and just a couple of fun facts that we've picked up along the way. So I guess the first thing we've got to think about and remember is that the Stasi were an intensely suspicious institution. They were suspicious of everybody. So the things that they did to the people and how normal that was, you know, was just inherent in the culture, it seems. The Stasi was, was there and created to maintain the control of the people. Um, it was separate to the Soviet Union eventually, um, but the formation of the Stasi was mostly communists that had been hard done by, by the Nazis and um, bringing them together 
this kind of you know discontent for what had happened in the previous decades and the war they all come together and thought you know what we've got to we've got to keep this socialist we can't be going back to what the fascists were doing and everybody it seemed to me that the majority of the people that were in the stasi truly believed in its cause so that's another thing to remember you know these people that were being spied on and spying on people they had a deliberate and a real agenda to do it for the good of everybody um, you know, because they didn't want to go back to a fascist regime. The idea of the uh, Stasi and the SED, so the uh, Socialist Party working together, um, was to kind of mould the citizens into um, what they called socialist personalities, which I thought was really good. So there'd be books, TV programmes, youth clubs that tried to mould and make this possible. This museum didn't talk about it, but I'll mention it because I love it. Um, a documentary I watched when I studied communism, uh, showed a couple of clips of this TV kit, like this kids TV program called uh, The Sand Mansion, which was, I guess, you know, a children's propaganda TV program that has 22,000 episodes and is still running today. It's the longest running TV program in history. In its origins, the idea of this program was to teach children from a very young age about socialist ideals. And again, like, this is all instilled into the culture. But some of the other things that the Stasi did, you know, they'd be using sort of technology to steam open letters, probe into packages, um, make sure that there wasn't any kind of secret groups going on, and um, they'd have people that were either, you know, forced to be recruited into the Stasi or that people would volunteer to do so for, you know, justification of continuing socialism. And it would mean that if there was any organised groups in the workplace, in your kind of friendship circles, uh, you couldn't really be fucking around because one in 20 people were Stasi informers and they may just tell on you. The final thing I wanted to say was that, you know, the most interesting thing for me was when Perestroika, which was the political reforms that was happening in the Soviet Union in the 80s, um, when that was happening, the Stasi were deeply concerned about that um, coming in and, and sort of starting to impact East Germany. And it's kind of that separation, you know, people think, oh, the Soviet Union had all this control over all these satellite states, but actually the people here, the secret police here, didn't want to give up socialism, and they were very separate. And I think, you know, even when the Soviet Union was collapsing, they were still trying their best to keep everything intact. Um, yeah, that's, that's me summing everything up. I'll definitely come to this museum. I hope I've told that right. I hope people aren't bored. But that's what I thought, you know, was really interesting. And now, let's go for a beer. So now we're at the Brandenburg Gate. Um, it's been here for a really long time. We just saw some posters on the underground that had Napoleon visiting in the 19th century. You've got to keep your wits about you though here. It's very busy and it's probably like the most famous part now. But uh, from my understanding, it signifies the east and west split of the city. And this was one of, was this one of the gates? Yeah, it was. So it was one of the gates, which uh, it's a pretty impressive gate. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can call it Baroque, it might be, but yeah, it's, uh, it's got the vibes of a capital city because it reminds me of the road down at Buckingham Palace, the Champs Elysees. You're right. Um, so, yeah, we're literally just going to stand there, have a look at this, and then walk a little bit further down. Is it going to be down that way? Because there's another I don't tower. Think so. I think it's that way. Well, we're going to go some way, and we are going to uh, probably get food and a bit of drink. But yeah, once you've seen it, you've seen it. You don't have to be here too long. Get a couple of selfies though, won't I? Yeah. Get your guide. See, I'm getting vibes now. This reminds me of San Francisco, the downtown area. It's got a very American downtown kind of vibe. The streets are quite wide. There's loads of traffic. It's way more built up for cars. Um, it's, it's actually completely infrastructurally different. And... Uh, I like it, it's cool, you know, it's cool to see. But I feel like my heart's just in the east. Yeah. And um, no, it's just, I mean, it's just absolutely mental. The difference, you go you go through that Brandenburg gate and then it's like you're in a different place. Like, 
that is honestly how it feels and um, I just wanted to get that observation on film like what the fuck I mean architecturally it's very old you know these buildings probably were constructed in the same kind of era you know everything's very different but oh nice but for the most part you can just tell this look this reminds me of San Francisco oh my god look at that Thank you. Enjoy. You're welcome. Thank you. Look at that. <laughs> so we just had ice cream with uh, Pete's friend from the 90s. Your friend from the 90s. <laughs> and his wife or uh, girlfriend or partner in. I'm um, now we are in I'm windswept. Stadmitter. It's okay. Now we're in Stadmitter and we're gonna to go to Checkpoint Charlie, the Hard Rock Cafe for a birthday present or a Christmas present, whatever's coming first. Yes. Um and then I I need a couple of beers before the end of the day. We need probably some food. So is it this way? Yeah. Yeah, we're in quite a posh bit at the minute. Those are designer shops all of a sudden like fucking I don't know. I don't well, know. Actually, it's only just got its bearings. Right, we're just going to get our bearings and then hopefully we end up at Checkpoint Charlie at some point.